and not everybody, I could not paint a picture when I asked people to support this project. You came through for me, and I am forever grateful to you, and thank you. words from the artist who couldn't be with us tonight but who had who prepared this very special greeting for you Gerda and for all of us tonight so if we're ready let's play um, dear friends I'm very happy to welcome you to this exhibition of mine I call you friends because for me, when people spend time looking at my paintings, they are friends. I'm, I'm really sorry that in a certain sense I am far from you. Uh, regrettably, I haven't been able to, to uh, travel to the show because my good doctors advised me to avoid the stress of traveling. But luckily for us, we have this use of the miraculous invention called video, and I am able to speak to you in person. Uh, I, I owe the event of this evening to the magical coming together of four major partners, each having a key role in the materialization of this evening. And to them go my special thanks. With particular fondness, I think of uh, Krista Singer, and I thank her. She's an extraordinary lady who some years ago produced the TV film, I believe it was for Bravo Canada. The film was entitled Samuel Buck, Painter of Questions. And I'm very much in debt to Gerda, Gerda Freiberg, who a couple of years ago, quite by chance, was in the middle of the night, watched Krista's film on television and subsequently made the connection between a woman and a talented boy she met shortly after the World War in a DP camp in Landsberg, in Bavaria. Must have been in 45 or 46. And I was that boy. Gerda traveled to Boston to meet me committed herself to bring an exhibition of my art to Toronto. It took a few years to materialize, but her energy, her devotion knew no limits. In it, she was much helped by Mira Goldfarb, the executive director of the Holocaust Educational Center, whose unique collaboration guided this project to its final fruition. Uh, such an undertaking needed well-experienced headquarters, capable of dealing with logistics and practicalities. Uh, the transportation of paintings is not a simple thing. And here came in the Packer Gallery of Boston, a gallery with uh, which I have been tightly linked for over 40 years, and which is a major player in my life's network of support and relationships. Bernie Packer is a close friend, and if I tell you that his son, John Packer, present among you, is my most wonderful organizer, presenter, itinerant ambassador, that is an understatement. And then there is Rosa Gracchi, of the Joseph Carrier Gallery in Toronto. Thank you, Rosa, for housing my paintings. For me, who um, had lived for many years in Italy, who is deeply influenced by the Italian Renaissance, and had been awarded an Italian citizenship, this cultural space is of a very special meaning. Ever more so, after I recently discovered that the Bach family descends from an Ashkenazi family of Jewish printers in Venice in the 16th century. 
This exhibition is not an exhibition of Holocaust art. I find it difficult to put these two words together. It is, I would say, rather an art that has been triggered by the painful experience of the Shoah. It is the art of a very lucky boy, a boy who had survived, who had evolved, and as a mature artist decided to speak of human loss, human repair, of mourning and resilience, of remembering, of preserving memory. A boy who questions the, the mysteries of life, a boy and an older man, same thing. The questions of mystery of life in the broadest and most universal sense. Exceptionally, this show contains a few examples of my very early works, painted at age 12 and 13, which rarely travel, because they are very light sensitive. For the ones of you who have time and patience, I have produced a special video for these exhibitions, in which I tried to enrich the viewing of my paintings uh, with a number of personal footnotes and explanations. I invite you to watch it. I hope that the show will inspire its visitors, mainly the young ones, to ponder the questions that these paintings pose. I am sure that the teachers are facing history and ourselves who so well know how to unite thoughts, reflections, and illuminate all that in young minds will be of great help. Thank you all for being here. Goodbye. We have some very special final words from John Pucker, uh, who represents Sam via his family's gallery, the Pucker Gallery in Boston. And John and his parents, Bernie and Sue, have uh, a lifelong relationship with Sam, and we are so fortunate and delighted that John is here with us this evening to share some personal reflections and insights into Sam's work and uh, the curatorial process for this exhibit. We are so pleased that John spoke with our museum educators this morning uh, and gave them some additional crystals, pearls of wisdom for them to impart to the students who come and experience the exhibit over the next couple months. And I'm so proud to introduce John to speak to us this evening, share with us uh, some additional insights uh, and then invite us to um, tour the exhibit together. Uh, so John, please come up. And when John closes, please uh, enjoy the show. There are stairs leading up to the gallery. The exhibit starts on the third floor here, and there is an elevator behind me to the right. John. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here in Canada this evening. Uh, our family is half Canadian, and uh, that's the, my better half, my mother's half, so I'm very happy to be here with you tonight. Um, this exhibition is truly a miracle, uh, truly a vision, truly a passion. We often do exhibitions of Samuel Bach's work all over the world. I just came back from Mexico City last week, and the prior week I opened an exhibition in Houston of 60 paintings. But typically we're working with a Holocaust museum, or a federation, or an organization uh, to prepare for an exhibition of 60 works of art, in this case traveling internationally. Um, but this is a rather unique exhibition. Uh, the only exhibition, in fact, that we have done with a single individual. Gerda came to Boston, as you heard, uh, I believe drove to Boston, uh, and um, one might say asked to see Samuel Bach or demanded to see Samuel Bach. And in any case, that meeting was arranged. And every step of the way, Gerda has had passion and answers for what couldn't be done. We can always put up roadblocks about what can't be done. There isn't enough money, there isn't a venue, there isn't enough time, we don't have the right partners on board. This type of art won't be accepted in our community. But the, none of those questions or roadblocks 
were a problem for Gerda. She said, we'll find a way. We'll find the right location. And she did find a beautiful and wonderful location, not only for its physical presence and its location, but more importantly, for bringing together communities. And the reason that Samuel Bach's art is so important, whether we're talking about the folks from Lithuania, whether we're talking about the folks in the States, or whether we're talking about people here in Toronto, is it's because how are we all together going to work to build a better world? Let us learn from the past. The beautiful excerpts that the boys read so beautifully were so sad. It was hard for me to sit in my seat and listen to Sam retell those feelings that he was having as a young boy. But this exhibition isn't about that. It's for the opportunity for our docents to take around young people of the community so that we do not repeat the sins of the past. So we learn from the past and move forward together as a group, together. How do we make a better world together? So the question of tikkun olam, repairing the world, from neighbor to neighbor, from friend to friend, is why this museum, this exhibition at the Carrier is so important, of two communities bonding together under one person's passion that this would happen. But what is really exciting here now is the young people who are going to have the opportunity to see this exhibition. That's where the importance is. The young people whose hearts and eyes can be opened up to learning from the past, questioning what they see in these surrealistic paintings. What you see is not necessarily real. It's intended so. Samuel Bach is a master painting. His paintings sell around the world. They're traded at auction. He's collected in private homes around the world. But that's not what's important. What's important is he's using iconography in the language, and in this exhibition, Angels and a Little Boy, to tell the story of a people. And that people, and what happened to those people. He happens to be one of the lucky survivors. He believes that it's his job, his responsibility, to tell that story to young people today. To ask them, how can I be a better friend? How can I not be a bully? How can I not choose to use a gun? How can we make things that are relevant to our young people today, all types of children, from the city, from the suburbs, from wealthy homes, from impoverished homes, how can everyone get along together? So this show is so important about education, about our future. And we are grateful to the Pucker Gallery, to the Carrier, to the UJA Federation, to all of those who have donated to this cause, because what you donated to is our collective future, the people of Toronto, our young future leaders who will be making decisions about how we all interact and get together. Gerda, thank you so much. Thank you from Mr. Bach, who's unable to be here, and thank you for everyone for coming this evening. Please enjoy the exhibition. If I can help in any way, I know there's a number of docents in the crowd who can help you, but I'll answer any questions about any of the paintings if I'm able. Thank you very much. <laughs>